Hello and welcome back to the Ionic School. I have been away for quite a while but now I am back with another video. So in this video we are going to learn about another cool feature that we can implement in our Ionic and Cordova applications and it's called Code Push. So we'll learn what Code Push is and we'll also implement Code Push in an Ionic application. So let's start by learning what Code Push is. So Code Push is a cloud service which is built by Microsoft specifically for Cordova and React Native applications. What Code Push does is that it allows you to update your applications on the go without having to update your application on the respective application store. So let's say that you have an Android application that you have built with Ionic and you have made changes in the HTML and CSS files and you want those changes to be rolled out to all your users. In that case what normally you would do is that you will build your application for release and then submit an update to the respective application store which is Google Play Store in this case. What you can also do is use Code Push to update your application and whenever you want to release any minor update for your application you can use Code Push to release those updates and your application will download those updates from the Code Push servers. This will eliminate the need of submitting your application to the respective application store. Now one thing that I would like to mention very clearly is that only the changes that you make in HTML, CSS or JavaScript files are propagated via Code Push. If you have made changes in any files other than that then most probably Code Push is not going to work for you. Okay? So I have created a new Ionic application here which is an Ionic 3 application and what I'm going to do is integrate Code Push in this application. So I'll just change the current directory to my project directory. The application name is Ionic School Code Push. Okay? So if you haven't already then the first thing that you'll need to do is install the Code Push CLI. All you have to do is type in npm install dash g code push CLI. Execute this command once and the code push CLI will be installed on your machine. Then you will be able to run code push commands in your terminal or command prompt. Next thing you'll have to do is type in code push space register which will create a new code push account for you. I already have a code push account so I do not need to do these things again. All I have to do is register my app with Code Push. Registering my app with Code Push will give me access keys that I need to configure in my application. So let me just start by typing in Code Push app add and then the name of the application. Now this name that you type in right here can be different than the name of your actual application. But for the sake of simplicity what I'm going to do is keep these names same. So I'm just going to type in Ionic School Code Push. This will add a new application to Code Push in my account. As you can see, I have got two keys. The first one is the production key and the second one is the staging key. Make a copy of these keys because you'll need these later. For now, what I'm going to do is just copy the staging key from here, okay, and open my application in Visual Studio Code. So here is my application opened in Visual Studio Code. Since I have copied the staging deployment key, the first thing I should do is go into config.xml file and here, right inside the widget XML tag, I'll create a new XML tag which is called platform android since we'll be building this application for android only. Inside this platform tag, I'll create a preference element and this will contain an attribute called name. The name will be code push deployment key, okay, and Another attribute will be its value and the value will be the staging key that I have copied. So I'll just paste that here. Okay. And if you are building your application for iOS as well, just copy this and paste it just below it. Just change the name of the platform to iOS. Save your config.xml and now you can close this file. Once this is done, you'll have to install the Code Push Cordova plugin and the Ionic native module for Code Push. So let's just do that. I'll open a console right here in my Visual Studio Code and I'll start by installing the Code Push Cordova plugin. So I'll just type in Ionic Cordova plugin add. Since I'm using the latest Ionic CLI which is 3.0.0, I do not need to provide the plugin name just yet. I'll just hit enter and now it is prompting me to enter the name of the plugin which is Cordova plugin code push. Make sure you enter the name exactly like I have entered. 
and then hit enter. This will install the Cordova plugin, Cordova plugin code push and will also make the necessary changes to your project. Now I'll have to install the Ionic native module for code push. So all I have to do is type in npm install dash dash save at Ionic native slash code push and hit enter. This will install the Ionic native plugin for code push. Now whenever you use Ionic native plugins, you have to import that plugin in your app.module.ts file and pass it in your providers array. So let's just do that real quick. Save that and close the app.module.ts file. Now what I'll do is go to my home page which is home.ts and import code push. Since we are going to use this module in our home.ts, we'll have to pass it in our constructor. Okay. I'll also import the platform module. Okay. Since code push is a Cordova plugin, it requires that your application is fully initialized before the code push code can run. So we will use the platforms ready function to make sure that the code that we write for code push is executed only when the application is ready and fully initialized. Okay, so we'll type all our code push code right here. And inside this promise of the ready function, we are going to write the code that will check whether the version of our application is the latest version according to the code push servers or not. If the application version is an older one, then the code will update the application and will restart the application. So I'm just going to type in a small bit of code here and I'll call the sync method on my code push. The sync method basically takes in two parameters. The first one is the sync options, which we are going to overlook for this video. And the second one is a callback function, which is executed when your application is updating. This is a function that will also get a parameter and this parameter contains some information about the size of the application update and how much of that update has been downloaded. So let's just call this parameter as progress. Okay. And for now, let's just leave this function blank. And once the sync has been completed, we will subscribe to this event. Okay. We will also get a status as a parameter in the subscribe function. And here we will check the status for certain conditions. So the status actually returns a number and that number carries a very special meaning in terms of code push. So what we will do is import another module called sync status from the same Ionic native module. Okay. And now we can use the sync status module to perform checks and display respective alerts to the user. So I'll just bring in some code here and I'll paste that code here inside my subscribe method. I'll paste that and inside this code, you can see that I have checked status with a number of predefined variables inside the sync status module. And I have tested, for example, for checking for update. This is a constant value defined inside the sync status module. And if the value of status equals sync status dot checking for update, then we will just display an alert to the user checking for update. Similarly, I have tested for other values as well, like downloading package, in progress, installing update, up to date, update installed, and error. And for all these conditions, I'm displaying a similar alert to the user. Okay. So the first thing I'll do now is add the Android platform to my application and run this application on an emulator. The platform has now been added. So I'll just run this application in the emulator. So I'll just type in Ionic Cordova run Android. So as you can see that as soon as the application launches, I get an alert checking for update. I'll hit OK. So nothing happened because we have not actually released an update on code push. So let's just do that. So we will now release an update on the code push servers. Before that, let's just make a small update to our application. So I'll just change this title to the Ionic school. I'll save that. And what I'll have to do before pushing an update is that run Ionic serve. 
Okay. What Ionic Serve does is that it watches for file changes in your application and builds your app again as soon as it detects any changes in the files. So now that we have made a change, we need to run Ionic Serve or Ionic Build to make sure that the www folder in our application carries the latest updates. And when we push our application to Code Push servers, Code Push picks all the files from the www folder and sends the update to the code push servers. So make sure that the www folder always carries the latest files for your project. So Ionic Serve actually launched the application in the browser. I'll just close that and minimize my browser and I'll keep this server running. I'll just open another terminal and in this terminal, I'll use the code push command to release a code push update. So I'll just type in code push release Cordova because we are working on a Cordova application. Then you'll have to type in the name of the application, which is Ionic School Code Push. Then you'll have to type in the name of the platform, which is Android in our case. And optionally, you can provide in a flag called dash M, which specifies whether this update is must for every user to download or not. I am passing a dash M flag, which means that this is a mandatory update. I'll just go ahead and hit enter. Okay, so we have successfully released an update on code push. Now let's go back to our application in the emulator, close it and try running it again so that it checks for updates. I'll hit OK. And you can see that I get another alert downloading package. I'll hit OK. And now it is downloading application updates in the background. Once the updates have been downloaded, it will show me another alert telling me that now it will install the application updates. So now it is going to install the updates and the updates are now installed. I'll hit OK and the application will restart and I should see the updates. So now the application is up to date and you can see that the title in the header bar changed to the Ionic school. We did not deploy the changed application code again to our emulator. All we did was push an update to the code push servers and the application downloaded the updated code from the code push servers. Let's try one more time. So I'll just remove all this code from here and instead I'll just create a button here. I'll save that and before pushing an update, I'll check if the ionic serve command has completed the build or not. And you can see that the build has completed. And now I'll just push another update to the code push servers. So the updates have been pushed again. Let's come back to the emulator, close the application and run the application again. And the application should again download some updates. And you can see that the application now is downloading the package. I'll hit OK. So now the application is restarted. It is again checking for updates. The application is now up to date. And we can see our button right here. We forgot to add some text. So we can add the text on the button and then push an update again. And that will be reflected in the app next time the app is updated. Let's also use this download progress callback to show some updates to the user. So what I'll do for now is just create a variable and I'll call this variable as progress status. This will be of the type string and I'll initialize its default value to a blank string. And what I'll do is just update this variable with whatever data we are getting in progress. So I'll just stringify progress using json.stringify and then assign it equal to our progress status variable. Now this should work, but I have tested this and it doesn't work. The updates are not reflected in the progress status variable. So to fix that, we will wrap this inside an ngzone.run function. So it will force update the changes in the progress status variable.
and I'll wrap this line of code in my ngzone.run function. So I'll just type in this dot ngzone.run. This takes in a function as a parameter and it executes this function and makes sure that the changes are reflected immediately. And now I'll display the value of progress status variable as the text of my button. Okay. I'll save that. And I'll run the app again. And the app will download the updates and install them and restart. And now for all the next updates, the application will display the status of updation right here as the text of the button. So let's just try another update. In this case, I'll just change the title to the Ionic School Code Push. And now I'll release another update. So the update now has been released. Let's go back to our application and run it again. And this time while downloading the updates, it should show the progress as the text of the button. And you can see that as the text of the button, it displays the amount of bytes that are downloaded and the total number of bytes as well. The update has been downloaded and now it will be installed. I'll hit OK. Update has been installed and now when the application runs, the title in our header bar changes to the latest one. So this is how code push works. If you face any problems or if you have any confusions, feel free to comment on this video. Also let me know what kind of videos do you want me to create and I'm really looking forward to your feedback. Thank you for watching.